Uh, it's, I'm always glad to be in Pitt County. Uh, this is almost home, having grown up in Nash County. I do remember playing for Northern Nash High School and coming over and playing Rose High School quite a bit. Uh, I remember one time diving for a loose ball, and then I don't remember much more. <laughs> other than my coach uh, waking up in Pitt County Memorial Hospital telling me it looked like somebody was killing hogs out there on the, on the, on the, on the court, but I survived and still love Pitt County. <laughs> Uh, home of a great university, community college, and people who care about our state. I'm always glad to be in schools, and I'm glad to be with Pitt County teachers, principals, administrative officials, students today. Glad to be here with uh, Mayor Thomas of Greenville, and glad to be with school board members who work so very hard, uh, a very tough job. We're here today to talk about a critical issue and that is investing significantly in teacher pay. Uh, in the next few weeks, I'll release my budget proposal to the General Assembly, and I'll be talking about a lot of components. I believe strongly in public education all the way from early childhood through our great universities. But I thought it was important for me to lead with this issue of teacher pay. I'll release a budget that will call for an average 5% increase for teachers this year and another 5% for teachers next year without raising taxes. And that will be a 10% average raise for our teachers over the next two years. It is the largest two-year investment in teacher salaries in a decade. Under my plan, keeping at this rate, which I intend to do with the help of the General Assembly, North Carolina would rank number one in the Southeast in teacher salaries in three years, and we would get to at least the national average in five years. And I'm also proposing a teacher stipend. That would be $150 paid directly to teachers at the start of the school year to help offset the cost of supplies that many teachers are paying for out of their pockets. This will somewhat reduce the begging from parents that teachers have to do for <laughs> essential classroom supplies. It should not be that way, but it is. And I think it's important that we have this tangible acknowledgement that we appreciate the many sacrifices of our teachers and what they have to do to ensure that kids have what they need to learn. This is important to me and I'm passionate about it. One reason is where you come from. I, I grew up in rural eastern North Carolina. I'm a product of North Carolina public schools, as I mentioned earlier. My mom was a public school teacher at, in Nash County, a high school English and French teacher. I saw how hard she worked. I saw her doing her lesson plans. Uh, my mom was a veteran teacher and she'd be working hard on lesson plans. I said, Mom, you taught this class for many years. She said, things change, right. students mm -hmm. are different. Mm -hmm. We have to continue to work on these plans. I know how hard teachers work. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of my mom. To this day, people still come up to me. Uh, although I lost her two years ago, she's got the best seat in the house, by the way. But, um, <laughs> Uh, people come up to me and say they want to pay me a compliment. I think it's about me, and they'll say, your mom was a Never have. And we think about teachers and how they affect us. I remember almost every single teacher I had, all the way from first grade through high school, I remember my third grade teacher, Miss Batchelor. She made sure I was focused. She made sure that I was challenged. She hugged me the morning that my grandmother died and told me it was going to be okay. Every single day, we leave our kids in the hands of teachers like Ms. Batchelor, in the hands of teachers who were here today. And for working parents, that's sometimes more hours in the day with the teacher than with the parents when the kids are awake. We drop our kids off in the morning or with high school. They come to school, they leave the house, they drive or they take the bus. And they do that with us as parents trusting the men and women who are in front of that classroom, that they are gonna help mold our kids into leaders, 
into good people, into people who will be able to make a living for themselves and will be contributing members of society. They're helping them develop into being the leaders of tomorrow and ready to take on the challenges that are ahead. And we do that because we trust our teachers. So it's time to put our money where our trust is. It's time for a significant investment in teacher pay. In North Carolina, it used to be on the cutting edge of innovation yes. and education, but lately we've fallen behind. Nobody agrees that 41st in the country is good enough for teacher pay. Uh, and we've got to do better. I think people in North Carolina haven't been the only ones to notice the lagging teacher pay and respect. Texas, Virginia, South Carolina have all gained great educators at North Carolina's expense. Right here you have the benefit of a great university in East Carolina and a school of education there. And I talked to one of these teachers this morning who said I had one of the best young teachers coming and interning with me but said she's going to Virginia because it was better pay and more respect. Mm -hmm. That has to stop. That's right. Houston even lured our teachers away with an ad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that has to stop. Right. The investments in, in this teacher pay proposal aren't just about investments in our teachers. They are investments in our economy and our children's and grandchildren's future. Education is a part of our legacy in North Carolina. It is part of who we are as North Carolinians. It's part of our DNA. It's in our state constitution. And if we come together as a state, we can get back on track. I've told many people when they've asked me, what do I want out of being governor? What do I want out of this? And I say to them, I want a North Carolina with a population that is better educated that is healthier, that has more money in their pockets, and that they have the opportunity to live a more abundant and purposeful life. That's what I want. And it starts with public education. I want to work with the General Assembly, both Republicans and Democrats. I believe that despite all of the partisan rhetoric that you're seeing going back and forth, on this issue about who's the blame and who takes the credit, we all need to start looking forward. And I hear positive things about teacher pay from them. Let's take those areas of agreement and let's go forward and do what we need to do for public education, for our teachers, so that you don't have educators when their kids say, mom or dad, I think I might want to be a teacher like you and that educator having to say, don't do it. That's happening now. Yes. That has to stop. I believe it will because I believe in our state. I believe in our legacy. I believe in the foundation we have built and together we can do this thing. So I will take questions from you. Do you have them? Yes. I've heard a lot of smaller counties um, talk about their difficulty competing with larger counties yeah. because of the local supplements they yeah. can or can't offer. Um, what can be done to level that playing field and to help these smaller counties um, attract great teachers when they could be driving an hour away? And yeah, it's, it's not just it? smaller counties, it's, it's low wealth counties and it's even schools within counties okay. uh, where there are lower performing schools. One of the things we have to concentrate on is increasing the base pay. That's one thing we have to do, to lure more teachers in the profession. The more teachers you get into the profession, the more teachers there are to spread around to schools like this. Secondly, we have to look at incentives that could attract good teachers, principals, assistant principals, to some of these schools that are underperforming, or some of these schools that don't have the resources that larger counties do. I think we need to reinstitute some type of scholarships like the Teaching Fellows Scholarships oh, yes, were. And what we could potentially do with that, that this is a 
political hot button. I think it's important to do this, but we could have scholarships for teachers that would agree to go to some of these schools that need to recruit teachers. So it's, it's an issue that I know is there, and it's important for the state to step up and help these counties who do need help. And we need to talk about it at some point down the road. And I can't do everything in my first two months. <laughs> but um, we need to talk about school construction. And it's been a long time since the health state has helped the local public schools with construction. We need to talk about that, too. Governor Cooper, thank you for coming. Um, talking about teachers and making sure that they have the pay that they deserve, how do you plan to do that without raising taxes? Number one, this budget will not raise taxes. Number two, the economy is beginning to pull out of the recession nationally. Things are getting better. Tax revenue is coming in this year. Here will be the battle. Do, does the General Assembly continue with corporate tax breaks and tax breaks that benefit mostly the wealthy, or are we going to invest in education? That's the question, and that is going to be the battle this time. You don't have to raise taxes to make education a priority, but you just have to make it a priority in your budget. I, people talk about teacher raises, they talk about helping public education. I always say, show me your budget. Show me what your budget says. That'll tell me how you believe, how much you believe in education. So this will be, this will be a battle this time as to how much we're going to invest in public education versus corporate tax cuts versus tax cuts for the wealthy. The CEOs that I talk to for the jobs we want in North Carolina, when I talk to them about our state, the first question they ask me is not what is your corporate tax rate. The first question they ask me is, do you have the people who can perform the jobs that I create? That means education, that means workforce training, that means those classes that we were just in, getting kids ready for these jobs of the future, that's what this is about. So we don't have to, to, to raise taxes to make the proper investments, but we have to make education the priority. We're talking about teachers, but what about other staff, you know, the school bus janitors, those who have not seen raises as well? We, we will have a proposal that are going to help all state employees. I wanted to lead with teachers first because I know how critical it is. And uh, other state employees, it will not be a package like this, but it will be a package that invests in our people. That's going to be another priority choice for us. I know that it's important that we have teachers, counselors, nurses. Our principal salaries are 50th in the country. We're 41st in teacher pay. Principal salaries are 50. So clearly we have to, some work to do there in our budget. We'll talk about that. We have teacher assistants who are very valuable, particularly in the elementary schools. So there are a lot of other personnel and a lot of other investments in public education that you'll see in this budget when we, when we roll it out in a couple of weeks. Governor Cooper, this is one of your first stops east of 95 since you've been in office. What would you like to see and what kind of plans do you have for this area? A lot of people here sometimes think that east of 95 gets forgotten. So what are your plans to grow and to improve this area? Well, first it's home. And home means a lot. Uh, Eastern North Carolina will always be my home. Uh, come from seven or eight generation farmers here in eastern North Carolina so it means a lot to me. First we have to recognize the strengths of rural eastern North Carolina and there are. We have good people here, uh, people who work hard. We have natural resources. Uh, we have transportation. Uh, we are ready for advanced manufacturing and other jobs that could come to Eastern North Carolina. But the state has to be a partner. We have to be ready with more capital, with loans for small businesses. Mm -hmm. We can expand Medicaid, which would be a significant boost mm -hmm. 
to the Brady School of Medicine, to Pitt County Hospital and surrounding Eastern North Carolina hospitals. It is in my jobs plan for a reason, because it's a three to four billion dollar investment from federal help in tax money that we've already paid to Washington that could come back to provide insurance for hundreds of thousands of working North Carolinians, create tens of thousands of health care jobs, many in rural areas with hospitals who are dependent in Medicaid, and help private employers with their insurance premiums because guess what? When you reduce the indigent population, you help health care costs for everyone. So pushing that will be important. Pushing education initiatives will be important. Broadband access, high-speed internet will be important. We cannot forget our farmers. Renewable energy has been a boom for Eastern North Carolina. I can go on and on about investments that I believe will help rural parts of our state because it is home and I believe in it. I've appointed a Commerce Secretary, Tony Copeland, who is from Northeastern North Carolina. Uh, we will have rural initiatives that we know are important. So I look forward to the challenges ahead and I'm glad to, to have been humbled by this opportunity to help lead our state. Okay, I think I have time for one more question. Good morning, Governor Cooper and everybody else. Um, in terms of raising teacher pay, how do you raise teacher pay without cutting the corporate tax rate? Well, the money is available right now. It's in my budget. We don't, uh, you mean without raising corporate tax rate? Yes. Okay. Well, we don't need to, we don't need to raise corporate taxes. We don't need to lower them. We need to make sure that we, instead of further corporate tax cuts, that we invest it in education and invest it with our teachers. Thank you guys very much. I thank appreciate you. the opportunity. Thank you, and, uh, thank you all.